She is presenting a speech on project number seven. It's titled Researcher Topic. She's doing this for the second time now. Not the same speech, but the same project number. The purpose of the speech is to research a topic relevant to the audience and then use stories, examples, visual aids, and facts to support the main points of the topic. The title of her speech, Jewels of the Sky, it will be five to seven minutes. Please welcome Mary Ann Burroughs. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. I'm fascinated by a small bird call, often called the jewel in the sky. You would probably know it better by the name hummingbird. They're called the jewel of the sky because they have this beautiful iridescent glow that sparkles when the sun hits on their feathers. And they're often in very bright, vivid colors like magenta, jade, and teal. Hummingbirds, there are about 350 different species in the Western Hemisphere. And when they're born, or when the mother hatches the eggs, they're a little tiny egg about the size of a jelly bean compared to a chicken egg. And, the, and they lay it in a, in a nest that's about the size of a quarter. Now, I had seen pictures of hummingbirds as a kid and documentaries as an adult, but I never got to see them up close and personal. Until a year ago last summer, I was in Canada with my daughter, and my daughter said, hey, Mom, look, there's a hummingbird. By the time I turned my head, all I saw was a streak against across the sky. They move with great speed. So we walked over to a small flowering bush near where the hummingbird had come from, and we sat and waited for a few minutes. And then the hummingbird came swooping down and hovered, and then began to feed on each of the blooms on the bush. It was only about as far away as I am to march, but it was amazing. It was hard to focus because they moved constantly. Hummingbirds have some very unique characteristics. Most of you think of a hummingbird, you think of a long bill. But actually, hummingbirds can have bills as short as a half an inch and as long as four inches. And the bill can curve upward or downward. And their, their bill seems to adapt to the type of floral that is available in the region or area where that particular hummingbird lives. Another characteristic of a hummingbird is the way they fly. Most birds flap their wings like this. But hummingbirds can move their wings in a motion like this, or they can move it in a figure eight like this. And they can fly up or down, to the right, to the left, backwards, and even upside down. Amazing. This past summer, my husband and I were in Hocking Hills. If you've never been there, it's in southern Ohio. It's a beautiful place to go hiking. When we were there, I picked up a flyer, a brochure. And in the brochure, there was an article, Feed Hummingbirds by Hand. Well, I knew I needed to go there. So we got up the next morning hiked for about four or five hours, and then drove to this park. When we arrived, there was a big circle of people all sitting down with their arms held up high, holding a vial that looked similar to this, with nectar in it. We went and got a vial and joined the circle. And I sat there for a long time. Nothing much was happening. After about 20 minutes, people started to get up and leave. And then I saw this hummingbird come in and hover and then feed in a bird feeder across the circle. So when the gentleman that was sitting next to the feeder got up and left, I walked over and took his place. I figured, well, if, he doesn't, if they didn't feed out of my feeder, at least I'd get to see them up close and personal. After about 10 minutes, the very seat where I had just been sitting in, a man was sitting there with his file, and suddenly a hummingbird came swooping in and hovered right by his head and then took off. He did this three or four times, and then finally, he swept in, hovered, and began to feed right out of the feeder. He did this three or four times, and then the gentleman motioned to me to come over. I was thrilled. I took, jumped to the chance and walked over, sat down, and held up my feeder. And after about ten minutes, the hummingbird swept down and hovered right out here. It's amazing. I could feel it right by my head. It felt like a big, gigantic bumblebee. They flapped their wings about 78 times a second. It took off. Then it came back in and took off. And then it came back.
back in, hovered, and began to feed right out of my feet. Even that close, it was amazing. Because they, again, they move with such speed and agility, it's hard to even focus on them. When we came back from our trip, the next time I went shopping, I decided I was going to get a hummingbird feed, feed, feeder. I was going to be ready for next spring. So I went out and purchased a hummingbird feeder. If you decide you want to try a hummingbird feeder, they're very simple. You just purchase a feeder. Now, hummingbirds don't have a sense of smell. They're attracted by the color. And thus, the reason you usually see hummingbird feeders in red. They love yellow, orange, and red. You simply feed, fill the feeder with nectar, which can be purchased, or you can make your own. You simply boil a cup of water, which you add a quarter cup of sugar, Stir it until it's dissolved, let it cool, and pour it in the feeder. Now it's very important that you clean the feeder at least once a week. You simply pour out the nectar, wash it in hot soapy water, which a tablespoon of bleach has been added to it, and then refill your feeder and wait for the party to begin. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, I don't expect all of you to go out looking for hummingbirds, but I hope I've at least tweaked your, uh, tweaked, your, <laughs> tweaked your interest in this amazing little creature called the Jewel 